everyone. Welcome in to another edition of uh, the East Alabama Works video podcast series. I'm program manager Carl Brady. Of course, East Alabama Works is the workforce development agency for Region 2. We cover seven counties here in East Alabama, and uh, we work with uh, individuals. We work with industries, uh, educational facilities. We just help spread the word about workforce development and training throughout the region and make sure that our uh, area has a well-trained, well-educated, viable workforce for the businesses and industries that are located here in the region. Today, we are going to talk about uh, the fire department uh, in Anniston, their training facility, and all of the trainings that are going on. If you haven't heard about some of the things that they're doing, you're going to be really interested in uh, watching and listening to this podcast because there's a lot of stuff going on that you may not know about. And I'm happy to have joining me now, uh, Assistant Chief Johnny Phelps, who is in charge of training for the Anderson Fire Department. Johnny, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Carl. How are you? Very good. And uh, anxious to get uh, to, to talking about the fire department and your new training facility or the, you, you've had the training facility there on Highway 21 for a while. You guys have recently expanded that training facility. And I've had the opportunity to come by a couple of times and see what you have there and what, what all you guys do. And it's absolutely amazing to me. So basically, before we get into some of the details, just give us an overview of the Aniston Regional uh, Fire Training Center and uh, what you guys do and how it came about. Okay. Uh, about, it's about 12 years ago. Um, we signed uh, MOUs and contracts with Alabama Fire College uh, that would make us a designated regional training site for them. Um, we're one of several within the state. Um, they come up with a plan uh, to get some of this training uh, closer to the locales, closer to the departments, because um, this is all, pro I'll, we'll get into the certs and stuff, but it's professional development for firefighters that we have to have. Um, it, it makes us do our job better, safer. Uh, um, it helps us uh, uh, promote throughout our career and, and helps develop chiefs uh, at the end of the day. You know, that's the whole goal is to develop everybody up. Um, but it was so expensive uh, for us to send personnel to Tuscaloosa for all this training that um, people were on waiting lists to be able to get this training. By us being able to bring it to the locale and the regions, it makes it, uh, it professionally develops not only Aniston Fire, but the entire region by us being able to do these courses here. So. Um, we're affecting Gadsden, Etowah County, um, Cherokee County, um, all the departments in all these counties, um, Talladega, you know, uh, they can send people to these classes and not have to pay for hotel, gas, all that kind of stuff. Plus, they're training uh, with the departments around them that whenever something happens and it becomes multi-jurisdictional, these are the faces they're going to see on scene. So that networking is a really healthy thing for our region as well. That's how it got started. That was Alabama Fire College plan was to get it throughout the state and let's get the level of training throughout the state higher and get more people trained. Absolutely. That's, that's great that uh, Aniston decided to step up and, and be that location and, and provide this training facility because what you guys have done out there is – State of the art, plenty of room, plenty of space, classrooms where you guys can uh, can teach it all out there. Yeah, it's just, we're fortunate. It has really blown up over the last, like I said, 10, 12 years. Never thought we'd be to the point we are right now. So we're, we've been blessed with a lot of support from the departments around us, from our city council. The chiefs that I've had throughout the last 10 years have been amazing. And uh, it went a lot further than I thought it would by now. Sure. Yeah, having the having the support from uh, city council and mayors chiefs uh, that's important to keep something like this rolling along oh definitely i couldn't do it without them there's no way talk a little bit more about the fire college and and, and that relationship and uh you, you mentioned that it, you guys are a regional extension of the alabama fire college which is based in tuscaloosa and and and, and how that relationship works uh to uh to make sure you guys are offering certifications and classes and things like that and yeah, there's a lot that goes into it um there's certain courses that we were already able to teach um firefighters we've got certifications that for officer training four different courses for that uh, and in instructors investigators inspectors um incident commanders live fire trainers just all this different array 
um, of things that that we teach um, that we could teach some of them right when we signed contracts. Some of us were already at the level we could, but there's a lot of uh, shadowing and professional development that's when, been involved for the last 10 years where we've had to train the trainer, I guess you could say, on some of these higher level classes. So it's taken a lot of time to get there. Um, and it's not just Anderson Fire Department, um, it's personnel from Oxford, Jacksonville, Gadsden uh, that are also involved with it to help us make sure we can teach these uh, higher level courses um, at a, a high standard. And so a lot of cooperation in there. Um, and we're at the point now where pretty much most of our courses um, are in-house instructors, including all the departments around me to where I don't have to pull from Tuscaloosa to teach much. Um, so we can kind of run things on our own, schedule them how we want to schedule them, um, schedule them on the needs of the region and the area. Um, and we have all of our own instructors in our area that can teach this to the fire college standard as well. Um, Fire College is, is we're, we're really, really blessed in this state to have the Alabama Fire College because pretty much it's, it's a one of a kind state organization. No other state really has what we've got in Alabama. All of our certifications are pro board and if SAC certified, duly certified. Um, we've got 63 different certifications that the Fire College offers that are duly certified. Um, so people come from, um, when I say out of state, I think last year we had 38 different states represented where they sent firefighters wow. to us to, to train in eight different countries, which I think shocks people a lot of times. But um, the military has firefighters. They have firefighters on their bases. Um, and um, Alabama's certifications are so valuable that they'll send their military firefighters to us. So we get um, people from um, Japan, South Korea, uh, London, Afghanistan. I mean, we've had them from all over the world. Gitmo sends a lot of people. Um, so they come from everywhere to little Anniston, Alabama <laughs> to take these classes that the fire colleges entrusted us to teach. And that, that's incredible to me and to, to know that, that, that the training you offer, the things that you guys are doing in Anniston is recognized worldwide as as quality training and that's that's important for our community to know you know we we we, we don't always hear the best of news uh, out of Aniston sometimes but then you come across something like this a program like this and you have to be proud of uh, of, of the progress you guys have made to be recognized throughout the country throughout the world as uh, a training facility of uh, that caliber as it's pretty awesome when I went on vacation to Colorado where my brother-in-law lives and ran into, um, I think it was a captain at the fire department there and we're, we're talking back and forth and asked where I was from. And I said, well, Aniston, Alabama. And as soon as I said that, the first thing he said was, I've heard they've got a really good training site down there for some, and I was like, he's like, I've been trying to get a class down there and go. And I was like, holy cow, that's crazy. You know, you're talking um, to the right guy. <laughs> yeah. I went and I went and helped proctor an investigator class in, uh, at Yokota air force base in Japan. And same thing. They were talking about Aniston's training center that they were trying to take a class in Aniston, Alabama. So pretty wow. cool to hear. For sure. That is. Now was, this is a thought that occurs to me and it's kind of off the beaten path, but was there, uh, a concerted thought in the fact that you've got law enforcement training that goes on at Jacksonville state that is well recognized. You've got CDP right there close to you guys where they're training first responders from all over the world. And then you guys have this worldwide recognized uh, fire training. Was there a thought process of, of, of kind of putting these close together or did it just oh, sort of happen that way? It, it, no, there was thought process in it. And we got lucky with this, with this old Marvin site. This used to be the Marvins and um, it mm -hmm. closed down. Um, it had been closed down for about 10 years. So we were lucky that we had the property available, but definitely the, the site placement for the training center had everything to do with Fort McClellan and CDP, National Guard training, uh, K-9 vapor weight, um, the, the A-Post Academy, all these different public safety training things. Um, we felt like we would be able to put our training center in the middle of a public safety training mecca and, you know, kind of, yeah. and I don't know that there's, uh, anything in the United States, honestly, that compares to the public safety training that's available uh, all within a, what, six, seven square mile area, <laughs> you know? Right, so, right. Um, 
we work with CDP on some things. We've got some MOUs with them. They teach certain classes for me that are in the middle of my recruit schools. Um, a lot of their students come by here to buy challenge coins and see the facility. Um, and then I encourage all of my students. Um, I talk about the CDP in most of my classes just so that they know that's there. And it's amazing. It's an amazing facility. It um, is. And the cost is free, you know. So, yeah, definitely this is where we wanted to be in, in close location to all these other um, public safety training uh, facilities, too. Now, in addition to training firefighters who are already firefighters and, and, and making sure that they are certified and trained. You guys have uh, also some other training opportunities. You have a relationship with Gaston State Community College where they conduct classes at your training facility for emergency medical and things like that. I'll let you go into those details. And you got some high school stuff going on as well. But talk about that relationship with Gadsden State and how that works out for students who may be interested in emergency medical careers or firefight firefighting careers. Well, the, the Gadsden State thing started, of course, we send our personnel, man and some fire personnel. We are minimum when we hire somebody, they're contracted. They have to be an advanced EMT, which is two semesters of college. Um, so naturally, we would send them to Gadsden State to get that. Um, we could do it in-house and do it cheaper, but the, the strain on our, per we don't have enough training staff. I would, I would tie up my training staff and of course we have a lot going on. Um, so I need my staff doing the things that they do, not sitting in front of an EMT class for an entire semester to get them trained. So it's natural, Gadsden State can do that for us. They handle all the administration of it, registration, clinicals, all the way through National Registry, Licensure and all that. So um, that relationship started there, me sending them to Gadsden State. Um, through the networking um, with the directors, um, eventually we got them to agree to come look at the facility and start possibly teaching classes at our facility, which keeps all between Jacksonville, Aniston and Oxford, keeps all of our students um, right here instead of having to travel. Uh, even though gas is not that far, it's still travel time and keeps them out of our city. Um, so they agreed to that and they came look at the facility and they, they tried a couple of classes and ended up loving it. Uh, so we do have MOUs with them now. This is a designated Gazan State campus um, that they can teach, um, not just EMS, but they can teach um, English out of it if they want to, if that's something that fits. If we decide to start teaching paramedic. Um, there's some English and math and other things that are required with paramedic um, that we can actually teach out of this facility. So now we do teach uh, EMT at night, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, and usually a shift EMT, uh, whether it's A, B, or C shift, how firefighters and most uh, ambulance services operate um, to where um, people can come on their off shift uh, to class and not be off of a truck on their regular shift. So that works out really, really well for us. I, I think it works out really well for Gadsden State. Um, that's how all of that started. And, and awesome union is perfect. It's good for us, um, good for them. Um, and we've been talking about um, possibly uh, doing an EMT for seniors, uh, which would be based after what we already have in place with our fire science students. Um, so we started a high school fire science class uh, about eight, nine, eight years ago. Um, and it has turned into a really, really good program. It took a little bit to get it there. Um, but we now have nine high schools involved that send their students to us that seniors that want to be uh, fire science or want to get into the fire service or even thinking about getting into the fire service, maybe not sure. Um, but nine high schools involved with our fire science class now. And over the past five years, Aniston Fire alone has hired 24 of those after they graduated. Wow. Uh, Oxford's hired some, Gadsden's hired several, um, Jacksonville's hired a few. So these students are getting employed at 18 years old um, in the middle of the summer, right after they graduated uh, into a career. You know, they're not just working at Burger King trying to figure out what are they going to do. They're actually starting life, uh, whether they stay in the fire service or not. Uh, they're coming out of high school and becoming productive. Um, for us, it's like anywhere else. I think right now um, the workforce is tough. Recruiting is tough. Getting people that yeah. want, want to work is tough. And the highest, our fire science program has been Aniston Fire Saving Grace. Um, I think we would be struggling right now if we didn't have that um, 
that avenue that we've created um, to hire um, good, competent, well-trained individuals to get on our uh, get in our fire trucks. Um, along with that, and that's when we started talking with the guys in state about possibly doing an EMT this year was our pilot program for it. And obviously it's just now starting to wrap up. So we, we're not sure about the success of it yet. Um, but, um, we had same setup, nine high schools involved, and we started out with 16 kids in the EMT. Um, I think we've lost two, so we're down to 14 in there, but they're, they've been learning EMT all year coming to our facility. Um, wow. For an hour and 45 minutes a day, learning EMT. Uh, they're all in the middle of their clinicals right now, which means they're uh, taking full days and going and getting on an ambulance and riding with a proctor and learning that side of it. Um, and then they'll all test out uh, in the next month and take registry. And we'll see. Hopefully everything goes real well with them. But we're hoping that's going to become a recruiting tool in the area for EMS, too, because EMS is struggling to find people, too. And we need yes. our ambulances to show up <laughs> and yeah, they can only do that if they got people in the seats, you know? Absolutely. Um, the, for the, for the high school students who are in your programs, are these considered career tech programs? Are they part of the career tech offerings of the high schools or are they a, a, a separate program? How, how does that work for, for our students and our parents who may be interested uh, yes, in that? How does that work for them? It's a good question. Um, they are both considered career academy programs. Um, we run them through um, uh, Calhoun County Career Academy and Anniston City Career Academy. Both of those uh, academies are the ones that run through. Um, so it'd be just like them going to their career academy in Jacksonville. It's on the same blocks that they run and everything. Um, mm -hmm. With us, instead of going to Jacksonville to do uh, welding or HVAC, any of that, they just come here and do fire science instead of going there. The buses, if they go during the block that their school goes to, the buses will drop them off here and then go on to Jacksonville and drop the rest of the kids off. And then same, pick them up on their way back through. Or if they drive, they can drive straight here. And if they drive, um, and we can work out their schedule with their counselor. They can take any of the blocks. Uh, they don't have to go when their school goes. If they've got football or band or something that uh, the, they would be um, resistant to taking this program because they'll miss workouts or something, they can choose another block as long as the schedule's worked out and still attend this program and not miss the things they need to be in at school. Very good. Um, have, have you been surprised at the number of high school students, once they learn about these programs you offer, are interested at such an early age in uh, in fire sciences? Yeah, I have, and it's funny because it's it's a year by year thing. It's not it's not a lot of consistency to the numbers that I have learned that if I don't get in front of the schools every every year, which is a uh, difficult, but I got to get in front of um, all the juniors and tenth graders at every high school. Um, somewhere in February or March, uh, or our numbers drop drastically because they, I don't think they, the younger ones even know the program exists. And so right. making sure they know it exists is very, very important because I think there's value to the program if you know nothing about firefighting. If you decide this is probably not the career you're going to go into, there's value still in that program. Um, mm -hmm. We teach a lot about character and integrity, um, work ethic, um, and just for them to know what we do. Because I think it's a mystery to a lot of people, um, you know, they get it in their head that we probably just play video games and sit and why. And I think it's an eye opener when you see how much goes into our craft and, and how much goes into a, a department successfully operating. Um, and it's the m most awesome career in the world, in my opinion, you know, and, uh, most fulfilling. And um, it, it's just a great career to get into. Um, and I think we open a lot of eyes in high school. And then we open some where they realize, oh, it's not for me. Not for um, me. <laughs> right. But we've still shown them something they don't know. You know, they don't know about life. And um, mm -hmm. I think they um, they get a lot out of it, even if they do decide it's not for their uh, career. I, I'm glad you mentioned character and integrity as part of your training there, because, you know, it, when usually the public has an interaction 
with EMS or fire, they're at a very vulnerable moment. They're opening their home up to strangers who, who come in and are handling a medical emergency or a fire emergency or something like that. And you have to be able to trust that in that vulnerable moment, the people who are in your home and are, are handling your uh, situation at the moment are of the utmost integrity and character. Right. It's super important. It is the most important thing in what we do. Um, and, and young people like that, um, they need to hear that. They need to be explained why they need to understand why, um, that would destroy our entire mission. If that's compromised, the, the things that we're involved in, the people have to be able to trust us. Um, we have to see them as our customers, not, um, not any other way. You know, yeah. the reason we're here is for the people that are calling us. And that's how we always have to look at it. And we have to take the utmost care of them, whether it's medically or whether it's um, they're experiencing a tragedy in their home. They have to know that we're going to do everything we can to try to make things better for them um, and not be um, not. I don't know, take it serious and, and realize that that's our mission is them, you know. Yeah, it's not, not make not not make things worse. Right, right. You know, and, and this is not just a paycheck job. If you're looking yeah. for just a paycheck job, this is definitely not the career to get into because you got to care. You got to yeah. care a lot about the people that you're serving. When the students finish your program, the high school students finish your program, what level of certification do they have and what can they do with that level of certification? With the fire science, they'll come out with a, um, a cert that's called Certified Volunteer Firefighter. That's what we teach them throughout. They still have another step that they need to hit. Uh, so I'll usually give them two weeks after graduation. And then we do a, a recruit school that's called Bridge. Uh, Bridge is a five-week recruit school that's only for people that already have the cert that they've got. It, it goes, it's more advanced than what they've already got. Um, there's a lot of physical training in it, and there's a lot of putting things together. Uh, so I'll teach, uh, it's called Firefighter 2 Cert the first week, and then it gets real physical for the next several weeks. And then uh, towards the end, we actually start jumping off trucks, fighting fires as teams. They do start fighting fires as teams, learning to run scenes, learning all the radio communication and coordination that goes involved to, uh, to when we get called to these calls and multiple trucks are coming in. So we advance them a whole lot further. Uh, they graduate and then they're they're certified up to be a career career firefighter. Well, sounds like a great program. Of course, it is, and, and in the middle of it, I'm every one of them. I'm, we're doing uh, applications for any departments they're interested in the state. We're doing, or not even anywhere they want to go. I'm helping them with applications, doing interview mm -hmm. practice, and you know, trying to get them ready um, to walk in the door to a department and be successful. You know. That's awesome. Let's talk about your facility again, just a little bit, because I, I know people are are interested in the physical aspects of uh, of a training facility. I, I know uh, you've you've got a, a an ambulance simulator for the Gaston State EMS programs, uh, so the students can uh, get a feel for what it's like to treat a patient in an ambulance and in the confined space of an ambulance. Uh, you've got fire towers. You, you've got You showed me a room recently where you can simulate the a floor falling out from under a firefighter and what they have to do or crawling through a confined space and finding their way in the, in the dark and in the smoke. Uh, so you guys really, uh, you really put these, uh, put your recruits through some, uh, intense training. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, the drill tower, it, it's set up to where um, I can smoke it up with fake smoke, um, any floor. I can black that tower out within, um, I think, about 14 minutes to where you can't even see your hand in front of your face, uh, but there's no fire in it. Uh, we can heat the drill tower. We've got trap doors between floors to where we can practice lowering into basements to rescue people, um, uh, basement fires, all those kind of things. Um, we can rappel off the top on any direction, all kinds of anchor systems and um, stuff up there for specialized rescues. And uh, what else? We're on the on the cusp of building another burn tower with Connex boxes. It'll be a two story, six Connex box burn tower with five burn rooms in it to where we can do all kinds of different scenarios in it. 
Um, we're building burn cells right now for our investigator classes that uh, will actually be on site that we will um, set up just like a living room or bedroom or kitchen and we'll set arson fires in them and then at the end of our investigator or towards the end of our investigator class they'll go out and that's what they'll investigate and they'll have to come up with uh, how did it start what happened all the paperwork all the all the the law enforcement things that are involved in it and then we'll show them videos of how we really did it and see how close they got and um we do extrication classes to where we practice cutting up cars and buses and all that kind of stuff in the back um mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff, you know. <laughs> I, I could probably talk for hours on all the little things. I'd right, start right. rambling for a while. Uh, in case people see smoke in town, uh, do you want to mention the, the the trainings you have uh, going on at the, the former Glen Addy Homes? You want to mention that in case people see oh, yeah. a bunch of smoke and wonder what's going on? <laughs> yeah, and with Glen Addy Homes, the, uh, I think they bid it out uh, to demolish those. Um, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but yes, right now they have let given us permission to where we can train on them. Um, they're uh, fire resistive structures, so it's, we're not concerned about training in them and, and creating a problem, burning one the whole facility down or anything right, like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're perfect, perfect uh, small drill towers for us. I mean, I think there's about 300 of them out there. Um, so right now we're sending crews out um, on a pretty regular basis to practice live fire training in them. Mm -hmm. They're safe um, for us um, and it is invaluable training for us because it's a lot of it is we've seen them where we're familiar with them, um, but it's not our drill tower. It's something different. Um, we're not destroying the environment with them because it, it, we're not burning the roofs off of them or anything like that. So you're going to see some smoke um, you're going to see some trucks out there uh it's it's just training it's really really good training for your local fire department uh, i'm fairly certain oxford's going to try to take advantage of them we've offered it to jacksonville um because it's good for all of us the more of that we can get the better for sure yeah that would be incredible training because you're actually instead of a, a fire tower with uh, different setups you're you actually have living rooms, dining rooms, kitchens, and you know, bedrooms that, uh, that that are already set up, their homes, and you can uh, work in those uh, those environments. Yeah, I was in them all day yesterday burning, and they're excellent. It is excellent training for especially our younger ones to be able to go um, because it's controlled. The way we do it is, is safer than a structure fire because there's a big plan. Structure fires, you jump off and you go take care of the problem. These, we put things in place to keep it safe, and we give them a plan and a strategy, and then they go practice the strategy and see how it works and see what's effective and what's not effective. Um, so it's, it's invaluable. It's great training for them. Mm -hmm. So, John, as we get ready to wrap up uh, for for anyone who's interested in becoming a firefighter with the Aniston Fire Department, uh, any student uh, in the area that's interested in being a part of your uh, your fire sciences program, how do they do that? Uh, how, how do they get in touch with you or, or I guess the, the students in the high schools get in touch with their counselors? But uh, what's what's the best contact way to get in touch with you and uh, the, the training center to put some of these things into place. Well, if you're going to be a junior or a senior next year, um, we offer this fire science class. We, we've opened it up to juniors for next year. That way, if you want to take fire science your junior year and then take EMT your senior year, you, you are able to do that. Juniors or seniors, contact your counselor and tell them you're interested. My email is jphelps, J-P-H-E-L-P-S at anistonal.gov. You're welcome to email me with questions. Uh, but get in touch with your counselor and let them know that you're interested in taking the course uh, next year. Um, the EMT dual enrollment is only offered for seniors um, because of the age requirements on testing. Um, same thing, get in touch with your counselor or you can email me and I'll help um, and they will direct you on how to get into that, that course next year. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in employment with Aniston Fire Department, you can go to anistonal.gov and you can click on civil service and the online application is on there along with the firefighter background check and everything and all of that will get forwarded to me and then i will start contacting you for documents and, and information that we need but uh feel free to reach out to me um, if you're interested that's a big part of my job is trying to get people interested in what we do even if it's not 
just for Aniston Fire. Now, Aniston Fire is number one to me, but <laughs> if it's not for Aniston Fire Department, I will definitely help you um, get into the fire services if that is your goal in any way I can. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for being with us. You have an amazing program there, and I have uh, enjoyed learning about uh, all of the programs you have going on over the last uh, few weeks, and uh, I I appreciate you taking the time to be with us on the podcast today. Yes, sir. Thank you. We appreciate your interest, and uh, anything we can ever do to help you all, you let us know. Thank you. And folks, thank you for watching and listening to the East Alabama Works video podcast series. I'm Carl Brady, and we'll see you next time.